Well, good day, good day. Welcome to another episode of Rob Report. I'm your humble host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Hi, how you doing today? Well, we're at the final stretch. The election is this week. We're going to find out if the loudness and brash bigotry of Trump will continue for another four years and him and his minions. Or will we get a new face of bigotry in Joe Biden? Yeah, I know some of you people don't like it. You don't like me calling Biden a bigot. Well, as you see in the title of today, it's a loud bigot or quiet bigot. When it is all said and done, a bigot will be POTUS. Just like any other election year. Just like since the foundations of the earth, we either had a bigot port or a bootlick bigot or a bootlicker to bigots. Now, I know you're saying, I can't stand this Negro. Yeah, I get a lot of people calling me Trump supporters. Didn't I just tell you, fool? Allow bigot a quiet bigot. I didn't make them a bigot. I didn't make Trump a bigot, and I didn't make Joe Biden a bigot. And for you to think Joe Biden is not a bigot is to be blindsided. But hey. We've been dealing with bigots all our lives since the foundations of this country. We just have to learn how to muscle these bigots into doing the will of us, black people. Dr. King had to deal with bigot LBJ. Heck, Malcolm X had to deal with that bigot um, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. King had to deal with that bigot. We've been dealing with bigots all our lives. Bigots, and and, and we, had been mus we had to muscle down these bigots and make them do our will. It's not going to stop. Now, my question is this. One of these two people are going to be president. When it's all said and done, the bigot will be posed. Now, I recently went on my Winning With Love broadcast, a little broadcast where I'm a little more calmer. And I say, at the end of the day, loud bigot or quiet bigot, you as a supporter or not a supporter, are you going to continue this divisiveness between supporters? Now, don't get me wrong. The bigot has his responsibility to try to not to be so much of a bigot. For an example, when Trump and they asked these questions about these white supremacist organizations. Um, and um, can you tell them this? Um, can you address them and make them and tell them that you're not on their side? Bruh, he can do that. And I'm all for him. You need to do that, Trump. You need to disavow these bigots. Just like the Democrats currently right now have Richard Spencer supporting Joe Biden and as usual, David Duke supporting Joe Biden. Oh, they just doing that to cause trouble. No, folks. White supremacy take on both sides of the aisle. They own it. White supremacy leads the Democratic Party. White supremacy leads the Republican Party. And majority of this leaders, and they employ bootlicks if they have them to do the bidding. The Democrat, the Republicans have their bootlicks. Democrats have bootlicks too. Oh, you think they don't have bootlicks? What make you think they're not bootlicks? I deal with people every day. And they look at you, Rob. You have to pick a side. I don't pick a side on white supremacy. I don't pick a side on bigotry. Whether it's loud bigotry or quiet bigotry. Whether it's upfront bigotry or in on the download bigotry. I'm I don't I don't support or put in power bigots unless there's something on the table for us in the fashion, in the design of Dr. King who pushed the bigot LBJ into passing black legislation or pretty much, I would say, equal rights legislation because it wasn't always just about 
black and apologetically black. Now, Dr. King knew that his first round of civil rights wasn't enough for black people. But yeah, he still muscled LBJ into signing the Civil Rights Act. But he realized the Civil Rights Act was not enough for for the black economics, of, for the economics of black people. That's when he started pushing the UBI. That's when he started pushing, um, giving land to black people and getting rid of redlining and things like that. He wasn't leaning on a political party to get issues done. He wasn't leaning or telling people to support this person. He was telling this person that was in office that if you want to get black support, you're going to have to do this. I'm not going to tell you vote or die. I'm not going to tell you to vote for the lesser of two evils. I'm not going to put them. I'm not going to play games with my people. See, he warned us in the Birmingham letters that um, one of my biggest mistakes was putting my trust in the white liberals who always tell you, look, wait your turn. Let's 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 make this happen. Then we're going to get to you. He that was detestable to him. And I'm in the same position that, hey. You need to stop giving these people your allegiance. I would never tell you not to vote. And if you told, if you ever sit there and heard me not tell you not to vote, then shame on you. I never tell you vote. There's always something on the ballot to vote for. I just tell you when you go in there to vote, vote for black empowerment, go for black, um, go for uh, black power, go for black empowerment, go for black economic development, go for black wealth equality. See, the notion that our forefathers died for us to vote is a misnomer and a, per, and a lie. You're misquoting or you're misrepresenting the reason why our people vote. Our black people fought and died for true equal rights, which included voting. It included voting. And even in the voting, they did not die for you just to vote the lesser of the two evils or vote, uh, you know, you know, uh, between slop and, and poop. He, they didn't do, they wanted you to vote toward the upliftment and the building up and the empowerment of black people. That's what they voted for. It wasn't that our forefathers died for us to vote. So you can wear all these voter die or, or what, what would our ancestors would say and all that. I'll tell you exactly what they say. You vote for another bigot that's not going to do nothing for you. We know this idiot ain't going to do nothing for you. And he letting it be known he's not going to do you. But you got somebody that's going to play with your motion and your heart strength and, not, and not, not even promise to do anything for you. Well, you know, Trump got the um, platinum plan for blacks. Man, that stuff is trash. You can wipe your butt with it. It's only two pages and you won't even get a burn. And for y'all think Ice Cube co-signed for that, he didn't. And I told you that over and over then. They saw my idea. They wanted to talk to me about it. Democrats saw my idea. And I don't care who, as long as they get it done. And I'm not going to sit here and make you feel good by not thinking that the other person goes to go. Because my, my job is negotiating and get you to the table. And the only way I can negotiate is get you to the table is make it at least look like somebody's offering something to me to get you to move. Because you want to tell me to wait till later. Wait till after I get elected. That's what Dr. King warned us. Don't worry about, you know, put your will down to the side. Get us here and then we'll come back to it and we'll never get back to it. We don't ever get back to it. Once you've given somebody power, they have no incentive to do anything for you. But once you get them in a the position that in order for you to get the power you need to do this, they have every incentive to get it done for you. Because they need you to help them get in power. And I'm telling you, my black people, and I'm telling you, my white friends, and I'm telling you, my, my multi-nation friends that live in the United States. Power without a demand can see nothing. You can't demand something after somebody have obtained power. You have to seize it before 
they obtain power. Because in that, you get your power first. And as long as we stay committed to these parties and, 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 and show our commitment and do and fall for every trick bag that both, both parties do, we'll never gain our power. You can never gain political, you can never gain black power within a political party. The Black Panther Party's to, taught you that. You only can demand it within yourself when you all come together collectively outside of a party structure and you put the heat on the party structure to get things done. That's what Malcolm X did. That's what Dr. King did. You name him, Marcus Garvey did. E.W. E. E. W. Du Bois did that. I can go on and on about the great leaders who decided even Adam Clayton Power did it, even though he was part of a political structure, he still went outside his political structure to get the power to go back into the political party. Preachers don't know whether to be a revolutionary or a preacher. Al Sharpton doing whatever he can to keep his TV show. Have, Got Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson. What have they done concerning black empowerment? What have they done? I, I, yo, they march and fall off and march. And, you know, we're going to march with this couple who child got died. What have you done, religious politicians, to make sure that there's legislation on the ballot that will lock down on police over abuse, police overreach? police abuse is there a death penalty if you kill somebody under police uh, um, custody no then they need to be one what have you done what have your political leaders on the left and right done concerning that they're not going to do nothing like that matter of fact the lesser of the bigot some of y'all call him Joe Biden His crime bill allowed that to happen like an open source, like an open book. It gave the police department the authority to do whatever they need to do to get any kind of information out of you to try to catch a drug dealer or their cohorts or their accomplishment or anybody else. Trump racism is bringing out the best of the best of the races coming up front. But yet these policies are bringing out one of the number one racial two racist organizations in the world, undercover gang police, to serve up black people at the altar table. This is why you take taking a stance before you vote. See, me personally, I voted the other day. I voted the other day. Would you like to know who I vote for? It's none of your business who I vote for. I've worked on majority Democratic campaigns. I worked on a couple of Republican campaigns. I even did some work with some Green Party candidates because I believe in the person running for office and their track record of what they've done in the past, what they're doing now, because those two combinations determine what they do in the future. That's why I side with them when they run running for office. That's why I'll knock on the door. That's why I'll make a phone call. That's why I'll run to the hills for those type of people. And you better believe I'm check your record to see if you did any harm to my black people. And before you get any kind of energy or exert power out of my body or out of my mind, I better see, I'm going to see if you did anything to harm, harm my people. And if you did do anything to harm my people, you either going to apologize for it and work with me or let me work with you to make that right. Or you could forget my support. I don't give a crap who you are and I don't care what I got to face with. See, I got balls. Some of you people ain't got no balls. Some of you people are weak minded, scared and in fear of this evil in front of us. And you don't even see the evil right next to you. Let me calm down. At the end of the day, 
when you go in that voting booth and you vote, there's no pulling that lever. We ain't, you got to go to the casino. The casinos don't even do the pull of the lever no more. When you take that paper and slide it through that machine, which oftentimes is faulty, when you're looking at that paper, do you know where each one of these people stand when it comes to white supremacy, low key or up front? Can you say that these people on the ballot never really harmed the black community? Can you say these people on the ballot actually passed legislation to lift the black community? I'm not talking about what somebody else did. I'm talking about you on the ballot. What have you done personally in legislation? What kind of bills have you drawn up? What kind of bills have you signed on? Or when it comes to the judges, how many people have you prosecuted? And what was the weight against black, whites, and stuff like all that matters? I don't care if you're running for city council, community leader, all that. I'm checking you out. Your past and your present determine your future. I'm not going to sit there and just say, uh, you know, people change. No, people change when they admit they change and they do things to show they change. You're assuming a person change when they not. When they may have not. They may have. But how do you know if they changed or not? Well, I tell you how you know. First, they have to declare that they changed. Second, they have to declare I did some bad things and I want to do whatever I can to make it right. And then you go look at their record past and present to see the things that they have done. Educating yourself and being bold enough to say, now I can support this guy. But like I said, you'll never catch me supporting people out of fear. I'm not going to support that other guy because this guy is just so horrible and I'm afraid of what he's going to do. <laughs> you know, no, I'm not. No, I'm just not going to support you because this guy is so bad. And you are not not as bad. No, you could be just as bad, too. I need to check out your record and see what you do. Because you ain't going to hoodwink me. These people voted for Trump, never knowing his record in New York and how he been a, a, a road dog racist. And it's not just the Central Park Five and publicly lynching those boys in public and not, not apologizing for, for them being innocent and him running his mouth. It's not that. It's the fact how he tried so hard to get black people not even to get on his property, let alone his golf courses. But he was excited to take black money when it came to his shirts and ties and, 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 and cufflinks and all that kind of stuff. Buying his books. Going to that, that uh, scam of a school. It was fine. People never took the time out to check out his record and they made a decision to say no. They looked at Hillary Clinton record, record and a lot of people said no. Did you look at Joe, uh, Joe Biden's record? My whole point is, look, you need to know before you go into the booth, the good, the bad, the beautiful, and the ugly of your candidate. You should not go in there blindsided. And that's the position I stand. You know, the Rod Report is always where the truth will make you free. You get mad because I tell you the truth about your guy. But you don't get mad when I tell his people the truth of his guy. You're like, yeah, that's right. Tell him. But as soon as I talk about your guy and then you tell me, you, I got to pick one or two. No, I don't. And let's say I did pick one of the two because I could find something in somebody um, that can possibly get me to go to polls if I really believe they're going to do a certain thing. Because I have to believe they're going to do it in order for me to get in there and, and, and pull that push that paper in for this person. I can find faith in a candidate. I can find one or two policies that I support and I can go in there and, and slide the lever. But my number one objective is getting rid of bigotry, idolatry, white supremacism, um, all that. Racism, you never get rid of it in the mind of a person, but you can fight to get it out of the seat of power because it's been there too long. And right now, it's going to be there another four years. You get Biden in office, you think white supremacy is going to stop? It ain't going to stop with him. It'll continue. But it'll be on the down low, on the radar. Go back and look at Joe's Biden record 
as senator. A whole 47 years he'd been in office. Go look at it. It's always been white supremacists on a low key. Always piling up with white supremacists on the low key. Well, you know, you know, he hung around Obama and look here, look here, look here. I did a lot to change Joe. Joe was not Joe anymore. How do you know? He's been around Obama. That may be true. And there may be a change. But you don't know that. So here's what I'm saying in this particular final message before the election. Loud bigot or quiet bigot? Loud bigot Trump, quiet bigot Joe Biden. When it's all said and done, a bigot will be POTUS. Now, well, at least this bigot, Joe Biden, is pushing a black female to be in the lead to take over. Power. Well, Let's get it corrected. We got a woman that's uh, multiracial, East Indian, Brahmin Indian at that. Go do your study on Brahmin Indians and the class teachings they have from the top to the down to their children, how they teach that they're above another, they're above, you know, certain people. It's like a level of white supremacy that they teach uh, without being white. It's a caste system in Indian culture about the Brahmian Indian, which her mom was, which her dad, uh, her granddad was, uh, her granddad. I mean, go do the study. So you think this half Brahmin Indian woman, half black, I mean, 25% black, she is black, 25%, and 25% Scotch-Irish, who her dad is mixed. He's black and Scot uh, Jamaican black and Scotch-Irish white. that she's going to push black legislation. Let me tell you something. Obama was in office eight years. He pushed LGBT community, LGBTQ rights before black rights. He pushed Latino rights before black whites. The first law he passed within 100 days was the Lily Ledbetter Act for Women. I have no problem with that. The problem was I have no problem with none of it. Not all three. I think all three of them are the right things to do. But the problem I got is who put you in office and at how many percentage. When they're trying to trash black men and we the one put him in office above black women. It's not that much, but it still was we beat them putting this man in office. And the first hundred days he do is a bill for people that look like his mother. And not a bill for people that look like his dad, even though his dad was not ADOS, American descendants of slave, he was black. The people who putting you in office, Joe. Remember this, Joe. The people who put you in office, maybe the one who carry you over at the end of, in, in this election cycle. We already know Latinos, you got a lot of Latin, you lose, you lost a lot of Latino votes. Folks, that's who elected Trump. It was not blacks. But yeah, some of y'all sit up here ignorantly thinking black people actually put Trump in office. You cannot control black evangelists. You cannot control certain black people that grew up in wealthy households and things like that. You can't control black people who don't like gay, gay rights, who don't like abortion. Thing. You can't control that. These people are evangelicals. They'll die for what they believe the Bible preaches. And they ain't gonna let you change them. That's more important than anything to them. But even then, with that little percentage, they did not cause Trump to win. There's a lot of things that the Democratic Party could have did to prevent this win, that win from Trump, but they didn't want to listen to the experts, they didn't want to listen to the strategists, and they didn't want to listen to the advisors, especially from the opposition of Hillary Clinton, who told them everything they need to do, that she needed to do to win the Rust Belt, to win the blue, uh, purple states, um, the swing states, and definitely um, to win progressives over to the side, even non-voters. 
Because they, you know, they, 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 when they cheated in the election primaries, 13 million left, and there were a way to get them back, and she refused to follow that. So a lot of it is the Democratic fault for not doing what they need to do to get that vote. It is your job to do what you need to do by any means necessary other than cheating to secure a vote. So when you got a particular base that that's demanding something, you got to answer that demand. If you don't answer that demand, you could lose a lot of votes. Is it their fault because they didn't vote for you? No, it's your fault because you didn't heed to their demands. Got a lot of people black here, black people saying no, no, no black agenda. No, no, I, 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 I can't do it. And whether you like that or not, whether you hate that or not, the fact is these people are serious. They figured the only way we're going to get black empowerment is to go back to the old way of not supporting a party, but applying black pressure to both of these parties to get our will done. They see a lot of black politicians in these parties and not, they're not doing, they're not fighting for the needs of black people. They're fighting to maintain their seat of power. Oh, I'm going to get this off my chest because this is last week. So shame on you. Shame on you for looking at this person and not looking at that politician and making sure that politician go do whatever he need to do to get that person's vote. You got to earn a vote. And shame on you call, saying that, well, if you're not going to vote for this person, you vote for that person. No, you need to say, if you don't give that person what they demand, you're giving that person that opportunity to vote for that other person. Even though that person may not do it, you're giving them the opportunity. But that's not how politics work, bro. You don't know nothing about politics, do you? The first thing you do when you run for office and declare your office is your platform, what you're going to do for the American people in order to get them to vote for you, in order for them to support you. And then if need be, you show them your vision for America. And if they disagree, you try to do whatever you can to get their vision of America a part of your vision of America so you can secure that vote. Your job as a politician is to do whatever you need to do to secure their vote, not assuming somebody going to vote for you because, you know, you was the vice president of a, a, a black person or if you had black friends uh, like Mike Tyson and all that, 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 none of that. Your job as a politician is to earn, earn every single vote. Don't assume that you got it don't assume you're going to get a, Joe Biden. I get so mad at Joe Biden talking about all the black support he got. Bro, you better act like you ain't got no black support. I don't care if you got 80%. You need to act like you only got 8% and do whatever you need to do to go get that 20%. And then you got a segment of black society saying you can have my vote. Bro, I'm standing on the outside of you. You can have my vote, but this is what I want done. Do you understand, folks, that is the best position to be in before an election? That is the best position to be in because it's a seat of leverage. It's a seat of power. And if it's applied correctly with majority of people on that side, you can get more done before an election than you ever did four years of electing a person in office. More done. You can get more done looking at both power, um, both seats of power, Republican and Democrats, and tell them, look, you don't own, none of y'all own us. We are our own, and we are solid, and we're together. You want our votes? This is what we do. If you don't, forget our vote. But you want to send, tend to think that that's a person who's just saying, I ain't voting because it, it don't work for me. No, that's not a person. That's not the same person, bro. That's an ignorant voter. An ignorant voters say, I'm not voting because it don't work. Now, even a lot of my friends that I know that may not be voting, they're voting because they see that these two political parties are pretty much led by white supremacy and always had white supremacist leaders or white supremacist handlers um, lead the party. And they'll do everything for everybody but black and they'll do anything they need to do to quell black power. And when I mean quell black power, they'll invite anybody and empower anybody to come in to um, that big tent, as they say, to smother the black, empower, the black vote. 
See, the thing is, America, America knew how powerful the black race is. They knew that we were breeding in rapid numbers. So they had to find some way to kind of stifle our growth. They did everything from killing us outright and throwing us in the pit to coming up with abortion, targeting the black churches to get people to go to get abortions for some of the dumbest reasons. Oh, you can't afford to have that baby. You ain't gonna, you know, or conning us out of, uh, you know, working our relations out, you know, telling us the only way we can get um, support from the government is we can't have a husband. We can't get, from sterilizing us as you join the military through inoculations from the Tuskegee Institute. So many ways through drugs and the drug war and drugs and putting it in our community. So many ways they find ways to kill us off because we're growing in rapid numbers. Because they don't want to be the minority. No way, no how. So the last result is let's just bring everybody in the world into this country, which is a good thing to do. But a lot of them are hoping to, that other people that come to this country will smother the voices of the descendant, of the originator of building this country, and that's the slave. So that's why some politicians say within my first hundred days, I'm going to pass um, immigration reform. Because they're trying to get that vote. They're saying that and they're even declaring that. Why? Because they want that vote. They're not putting the pressure like they do on black people. Yet, they still these Latinos go vote for Trump. More Latinos voted for Trump than blacks. But you're going to try to crap on the blacks that supported for Trump and don't even crap on the Latinos or crap on the white women or crap on the white women. But some of you do. Some of you do. I do give you that. You crap on anybody that does. But not knowing that even though that may be horrible, over here, they're cooking up a plan to drown out the black vote and the so-called party of black people. Understand this, the Latino um, population is the fastest growing population. If they decide to get on code and divorce themselves from both parties like the Asians, because you realize the Asians divorce themselves from partyism. They stand on out saying, if you want our support, you got to come to us. I don't care what party you is. You want our support? This is what needs to be done. And guess what? Both Democrats and Republicans kiss their behind to get something done for the Asian community. I don't care how racist they are. Why? Because they need that empowerment, they need that money, and they need that vote. Latinos doing the same thing. It's time for blacks to do the same thing, too. Divorce from these two parties. And I understand you're scared. You're not going to do it now because you, you, anything to get Trump right. So you ain't got the balls to do it now. And I, I got it. I got it. I get it. But hopefully you get some balls. Hopefully you get some gonads or testicles or ovaries to look at both parties. Yeah, even the Democratic Party said, look, we are the power in the party. We ain't No, 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 Joe. No, don't come telling me you're going to pass the Equality Act, you and Kamala Harris, trying to um, reinforce more legislation for, for the LGBTQ community, and you ain't done nothing for the people who put you in the office. We put you in the office, not the LGBTQ community. Even the LGBTQ um, blacks put you in the office. It's the black race. It's black people that put you in the office. And look, you, can't, you, you ain't doing this no more. I'm telling you. See, the thing is, some of you will get on code now. Some of you will get on code later. Better late than never. But it's better as soon as possible so you can see some of these things happen for you, be, before you leave this earth.
we as a people should not show loyalty. I'm not telling you don't support them. I'm not telling you don't vote for them. I'm not telling you that. I'm saying we shouldn't show loyalty to them. We should always make these political parties come see our vote. See our, because like I said, we keep giving them free power, free reign, giving it up. Like Ice Cube said, we keep allowing them to come get the nappy dugout all day, every day. We don't even get a kiss on the forehead when they leave. We don't even get a few dollars on the dresser. We don't get none of that. We go to the dance and we give them the best time of their life and they go leave with somebody else. That's what I'm talking about. See, some of you people think you know politics. And you just know about voting. And you only know about what they told you. I know. That's how I used to be. But I learned about why we vote. And I learned about why black people, as a people, we vote. We don't vote just to be voting. And we don't vote just for Democratic or Republicans. And we don't just vote. Black people don't supposed to be voting for the lesser of the two evil. Well, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, we got to, you know, I mean, if things are crazy, we got to get this man out. And we do. And we just got to get anything but him. No, you don't. You better make sure you're replacing that mess with something that's going to do great for you now. Honestly speaking, I don't like the choice. I don't like Biden's past. I don't like Biden's record. I don't like the fact that Bible Biden to this day doubled down on his legislation, which means to this day he still is in support of white racist bigot legislation. Tell a friend of mine, the only reason Trump do not put his mouth on Joe Biden, he can mention the crime bill, but Trump know he's fine with the crime bills. So Trump need to stop that foolishness. You like the crime bill just, it is, just as it is. That's why you never mentioned that you were going to overturn the crime bill and come up with something better. And even if you did promise to overturn the crime bill, we know you're going to come up with something 10 times worse. But because it is already bad enough, you ain't got no problem. With the crime bill, you only mentioned it because your opponent was the author and the developer and the finisher, along with Orrin Hatch, well, another bigot and long time famous bigot, Strong Thurmond. And the bootlick black people that support it because they were muscled into supporting it because of the Violence of the Women Act. I really don't think most black people that signed it. Well, let me rephrase that. I want to hope that most black people that signed that horrible legislation only signed it because they didn't want they were caught in the catch 22 that if they don't sign it, either you're going to harm your black community or you're going to be shamed and ridiculed for not supporting white women, um, supporting women who get abused uh, and experience violence. Joe Biden's to this day double down that it was the right right thing to do. Give me a moment, somebody calling me. Right thing to do. Give me a moment, people. All right, so I had to tell this person I'm doing a video. So, in closing, black people didn't put Trump in office, so stop spitting on black people. Even the people that, that did put Trump in the off, you spitting on them ain't going to come to your side. And a lot of them regret they vote and come in over to another view of thinking. Most people, they vote hoping for the better. And when they find out this person ain't no different, then they don't vote for the person in the next four years. That's the whole point of voting. I'm going to give you a shot. 
You only got one shot. Don't mess it up. Because if you mess it up, I'm not giving you power again. And I understand a lot of people are voting for Biden on that same thing. I'm going to give Biden a shot. Better not blow it, Biden. People vote like that. Now, me, I'm not a voter shamer person. I think it defeats the purpose. I think it's undemocratic. I think it's awful. It reminds me of the people who um, supported Hitler and how they ran these people in because they were anti-Hitler. Shamed them, dogged them. Even their family members was leading them to the gas chamber. Family members. There were Germans that did not support him and they led him to the gas chamber. And some people are just like that with Trump and some people are just like that with Biden that um, shame on you. I may not lead you to gas chamber, but I'm sure going to make you feel like you went in the gas chamber. Shame on you. You only get one vote. You got to make the most of your vote. Stop worrying about somebody else's vote. I can't do nothing with your vote. I can convince you above your will, but you still have the same opinion still. I got to focus on my vote. My vote is precious. My vote is valuable. And if you want it, you got to come get it. I don't slut vote. I don't vote all R's down the ballot, all D. I get to know my candidate. I get familiar with my candidate. I try to get close to my candidate. If I need to, I'll go work on my candidate's campaign. I'll pass out. If I believe in them, I'm going to pass out flyers. I'm going to make phone calls. I'm just not going to say I put a sticker up or put a little wallpaper up or put a little thing around my picture on Facebook. I don't do that. I get in the middle of this stuff. Then sometimes when I get in the middle, I'm like, I don't even know what I got into because so much crap going on in the middle of these campaigns. Inside debauchery. At the end of the day of this particular election, this is what we're going to get. A loud bigot or quiet bigot. Joe Biden is a quiet bigot. Don't get me wrong. He got a mouth almighty, tongue everlasting too. But because Joe Biden is a little older, he's not the aggressive Biden of the 90s. Thank God. I wouldn't want that guy to be president. But he's a little older. And maybe the little age have done something. I don't know. I won't know. He claims that he's going to have, he's going to be the, he's going to make FDR look bad. He said he's going to be the most progressive president since FDR. Bruh, you got some big shoes to fill. Now, look, don't get me wrong. FDR did a lot of great things for America, but he told black people, hold up, boy. I don't want to talk about your civil rights right legislation. I got some things need to be done for the sake of this country first, for all people. I got to do the jobs. I got to come up with my, my, my bill of rights and get people to buy into it. So you and your civil rights boys can go sit down and have a seat a little bit until we get done. I got to bring this economy up because we just got hit with a war and we just got hit with Great Depression and I got to lift this country back up. So sit down and wait your turn. Same thing that Dr. King talked about in the Birmingham letters. Same thing. Y'all want to mock Ice Cube because Trump campaign wanted to look at the black agenda. He didn't work for Trump. He didn't advise Trump. They just looked at the agenda, saw one thing and tried to implement that. And still, Cube said, look, you can do whatever you want. I ain't got nothing to do with my plan. This is my plan. Y'all y'all can take whatever you want. It ain't going to work. You can copycat all you want. This is my plan. He went to Joe Biden campaign and campaign did the same thing that Lyndon, um, same thing that FDR said. Go sit in the corner, boy. Wait till we get elected. Matter of fact, you go out there and get me some votes, and then we'll we may take a look at it. We all know that once you are in a position of power, you have no incentive to take a look at anything, because now you got what you wanted. As they say on the street, bro, you done got yours. She mad now. She didn't get hers. And that's how black people are starting to get right now. We done help you get to the point of climax, winning that seat. And now you ready to go ahead and get a little nap, maybe a smoke and a nap. 
But at the end of the day, we waking up and we don't even see you in the bed no more, bro. You going down the street to Susie Latino. Or you going down to Craig LGBTQ house. Yeah, some of you black people think that we don't need to wake up and realize how we're being screwed over and over again, not just by the Republican Party, but by the Democratic Party, too. So even though you're supporting certain people in the party, and I get it, because look, I don't support parties. That's why I'm free to talk about parties. I don't support the party. I do support individuals in the party. There's few people that I support in the, in the, in, in the Democratic Party. I support Jamal Bowman. And I'm going to be on Jamal Bowman behind because I got direct connection to Jamal Bowman. I'm going to be on his behind. Not direct. I don't have his phone number. But I know how to get to him. I'm going to be right on his behind if he ain't pushing black legislation first. If you start pushing that, the, the LGBT and Latinos legislation when black people got them in the office in higher numbers, I'm going to be on them. Now, if Latinos got them in the office in higher numbers, who am I to be on him? I only can be on him because he's black, <clears throat> but I can't. But if we put him in office in huge numbers, which we will, I know, because I'm, I'll be out there knocking on doors for the brother Mar. He must do some things for the black community within this first hundred days, and the same thing goes for Joe Biden. Now, what's going to happen, and I'm going to talk about this soon, is Joe Biden is getting so cocky and arrogant. Bad enough, we got Trump as a cocky, arrogant son of a gun. Joe Biden already bragging about how he caused the numbers to go up in Virginia. He caused the numbers to go up in Pennsylvania. He called it up, bro, you ain't caused none of that. It was not your team. It was not Simone Sanders. It was none of that. It wasn't Kamala Harris. It was people scared of Trump and tr people don't want Trump for four years. And people don't want to deal with this COVID for another four years. That is getting people out. It ain't nothing special about you, bro. You have no platform. You're not Obama. You ain't got it like that. And just because you pick a woman of color, and believe me, she's a woman of many colors, just because you picked a woman of color don't mean that is the reason why you're in the position that you're in today. No. It's Trump. Trump is, Trump is such a horrible candidate. People don't want, especially black people, majority of black people, we don't want to deal with that mess. We don't want to look at it. We don't want to deal with it. Majority of black people don't. And because Trump is so horrible, they're giving you support by default. And you're getting it easy because you haven't promised anything to them, which is sad. And you should. And I'm not talking about that lift of your voice crap. You should go to the black community, find out what they need, let them give it to you, and you go advocate for that. Your first 100 days. Now, it's hard to put the heat on you once you get in office, but getting putting the heat on you now was the best time to do it. So, you know, at the end of the day, we know what's going to happen in the booth. You're not doing that, man. And Obama had, and look, Obama didn't have the fear of um, John McCain. The fear of John McCain ain't there to drive people to the poll. People are leery in terror, fright, fearful of another four years of Donald Trump, that they'll run and put Mickey Mouse in the poll if you wasn't on the ballot. And Mickey Mouse was on the ballot, they will put Mickey Mouse on the ballot. And Mickey Mouse ain't going to do a doggone thing for us, but at least he can make us laugh. <laughs> Nobody want Trump. And that's the only reason why you're getting overwhelmingly support in the black community. It's not nothing you, you you're, it's not about your past. Believe me, because if it was, folk, black folks wouldn't be supporting you. It's not just because you were Obama VP. Believe me, that ain't enough. It's because Trump is so horrible. And people figure they don't have anywhere else to go. So they're going to go to you. So whatever numbers you breaking, it ain't you who broke it. 
It was Trump bad, Trump scary. I can't fathom another four years of Trump. That is driving them to the pole. Not anything you planned on doing, not any of your policies, not your perpendicular speech. You're not Obama. You're getting this by default. And here I am saying that if black people get you in the office in the high 90s, outdoing everybody else, I would be uh, I will be riding your behind to the cows come home. If you don't push any black legislation for the people who got you in the office stronger and more than anybody. And again, it's not about you. It's that black people have been bought into the scary fear of Trump, and Trump helped them. Trump helped seal the deal. So, in closing, allow bigot acquire bigot. When it's all said and done, a bigot will be president of the United States. And once that bigot get power, everything that he claimed he going to do, he have no incentive to do it right now because nobody pushed him to the point of doing what New Gingrich did, a contract for the people who put you in office. That's why I'm not crapping on Ice Cube. I actually think it's a good idea for Ice Cube to do it. He should have came up with it a long time ago. I'm not worrying about the timing or none of that stuff. It still need to be done at the end of the day, no matter who's president. You still need to be a contract with black America because black America going to start. You may be okay with them using you like a, like a tramp. You okay. You may be okay with them pimping you out every four years, every two years. You may be okay with that. But a lot of black people are saying, no, I'm not okay with that. We ain't going to be doing what our forefathers did the past 40 years. This mess ends now. You're going to go start seeing more black people detest themselves from both the Republican Party and Democratic Party going to independence, standing in a position saying, look, you want this huge voting block? Then let's get to making some deals, just like Dr. King did or Lyndon B. Johnson. So at the end of the day, bigotry will be in the house. At the end of the day, White supremacy will control, still control the White House and the Senate. Even if Kamala Harris was, um, Biden was to pass on within the four, four, first four years and Kamala Harris take that seat. You better believe the powers of B is going to be doing what they did with Obama. Allow him to push everything else but true to the core black policies to lift up black people. And yes, we can blame the powers that be, and we do blame the powers that be that didn't allow Obama to do those legislation, but we also can blame Obama, because here's the difference between Obama and Kamala Harris. Obama was a popular president. Kamala Harris is not popular. She's only popular within certain segments of the black community. She's not popular with white women. She's not popular um, with white men. She's not popular with black men, but she is popular with a certain segment of black, um, black women. And that ain't going to be enough to carry her to a re-election. And if Joe Biden end up passing on within the first four years, she need to be on her knee to the black community doing whatever she can in order to get that vote. Because it ain't going to be as simple that you automatically going to get these black votes like you've been doing for the past 40 years. More black people will go independent. I predict that. And go watch Phil um, um, uh, uh, Phil Advice show. And he'll show you the numbers. Blacks are going independent. Blacks are deciding to do what Malcolm X said. Detach yourself from parties, become a voting bloc, and force them to come to you. Because until then, until then, you're not going to see major things happen for black people. I don't care who you put in the seat of power. You can put a black person in the seat of power and that still don't give them the power to do what they want to do for black people. So we're saying that if you want to win everything, win it all, you know who can do it for you. But if you want it done, you know what you're going to have to do for us. I'm Rob Brown with The Rob Report. I'll holler at you later, people. I love you. Happy voting. Keep your eyes on the prize. And remember, at the end of the day, black people have to put black 
before political parties. I'll holler at you later. Peace.